G'day everyone, welcome to Lubrication Explained. Have you ever heard the term bright stock or maybe solvent neutral? Have you ever wondered what that means? Both of them are actually group one base oils, but I'm here to explain the differences. Let's get into it. All right, so let's talk about solvent refined base oils, commonly just known as group one. And if you'll remember on our little triangle that the exercise in making group one base oils is an exercise in removing aromatic content, then taking naphthenic content and removing it slowly so that we move from group one to two to three. Now group four PAOs are almost completely paraffinic. Now when we say paraffinic, we don't actually mean paraffins because paraffins are straight chain hydrocarbons that have not so great pore point properties, right? Remember they, they make crystal structures that encapsulate the base oil. So what we actually want is isoparaffins, so they're branched paraffins, and a PAO is purely a branched paraffin. So we start the process with crude oil, right, because these are all mineral oils, and we put them through an atmospheric tower, and what that does is it separates out the different fractions by weight. And it does this by using the fact that the size of a molecule is correlated to its boiling point, right? So we have this mix of different molecules and we can basically sort them. Then what we do is we move on to the actual refining process itself. You know, we have different distillate cuts, we do um, de-asphalting, and then we have solvent extraction. Now with solvent extraction, we're trying to remove the aromatic content. That's the purpose of solvent extraction. So we use some a really highly polar component like uh, a furfural or something like that. And what that does is it helps bind to the uh, you know aromatics and it pulls them out. So that's what we talk about by solvent extraction. After that, we go through a solvent de-waxing process. Again, we're using a solvent which has a, a, a preference for straight chain paraffins, right? And so when we do this, we're able to then with something like a, a toluene, for example, pull out the straight chain paraffins. Now we have a product which has very little um, aromatic content, very little wax content, and we can then move on to the kind of final step in the uh, refining process, which is hydro finishing, which is basically um, what we want to do is put in some uh, hydrogen under a little bit of pressure, and that is going to help to break some of the the double bonds, and that's going to saturate those double bonds. And at the end of it, what we have is a group one base oil. Now, what we have at the end of this is what we would call a bright stock, right? So the, the end of this process that I've showed, whenever you see bright stock or bright stock 150 or something like that, that refers to something, a group one base oil that has been hydro finished. However, you'll probably have also seen the term uh, which is called solvent neutral. And that's effectively a group one base oil that has not gone through hydro finishing. So that, that makes it cheaper, right? Hydro finishing is an extra step in the manufacturing process, which helps uh, contribute to demulsibility, color stability, and a bit of oxidation stability. But you don't really market products on the basis of any of those uh, metrics. So often a solvent neutral base oil, right? Which is a group one, is going to be slightly cheaper because it hasn't gone through that hydro finishing process, but it has slightly less desirable properties. So that's the main difference between the two uh, different group one base oils. Now let's talk about some of these um, processes in a little bit more detail. So um, with vacuum distillation, for example, what we're fixing is the viscosity, the flash point, and the volatility. And we're doing this because each of the different cuts has a different molecular distribution. So at the, at the high end, for example, we have a mean where that peak is on molecular size, right? But the next cut down is obviously a larger molecule, right? So that makes it heavier and with a higher boiling point. And of course, if we go heavier still, then we get another point. Now, flash point and volatility are more related to the breadth of that distribution. So um, as an example, if I have um, you know, a vacuum distillation process which doesn't make hard cuts, then, you know, if I increase the size of the distribution, then that shows you that I have more light ends, and light ends contribute to volatility and flash point. 
When it comes to solvent extraction, what we're fixing is the viscosity index and the oxidation stability. So the aromatics, which we're pulling out as part of the solvent extraction process, they tend to be components which, one, aren't all that oxidatively stable, because if you'll remember, the benzene ring has a lot of double bonds in it. And as far as VI goes, remember, we have a preference for paraffinic content. So in this instance, we're using, um, if you'll remember, it's like an NMP or a furfural to come in and take away those aromatic compounds. When we move on to solvent dewaxing, what we're fixing is the pore point. So if you remember straight chain aromatic, sorry, straight chain hydrocarbons, which are paraffins, are waxy molecules which are going to contribute to crystallization at low temperatures. So in this instance, we're going to bring in something like a toluene and it's going to help remove some of those paraffinic molecules. It's not going to be perfect. We'll still have some paraffin content and some aromatic content at this stage, but we have removed a considerable amount of it. And then finally, we move on to hydrofinishing, which is an exercise in trying to, uh, you know, saturate some of those double bonds, right? So that's what we're going to do there. What that helps with is things like color stability, oxidation stability, and demulsibility. So hopefully in, in that short amount of time, I've been able to give you a feel for um, group one base oils and what all the different uh, steps in the manufacturing processes contribute to. I think the big takeaway from this video is the difference between solvent neutral and bright stock group one base oils. That's a term that you'll um, commonly hear in the market. And so now at least you know the difference. All right. If you've got questions or comments, please leave them down below. Otherwise, as usual, this has been Lubrication Explained.